Aristotle said, liberty and equality will be best obtained when all persons alike share in the government to the utmost. The Junior Leagues of New York State present The Price of Liberty. Things were not always as they are today. The courage of our early settlers made possible the freedoms we enjoy. And to them we owe an everlasting debt of gratitude. But even before the first white man set foot on America, the Indian nations had built many fine civilizations and governments. Today I'm going to tell you the story of the great Indian Confederacy formed in New York State several hundred years ago the famous Iroquois Confederacy. For many years, the Iroquois tribes, Mohawks, Onondagas, Senecas, Cayugas, Oneidas in New York State had been at war with each other. But because of the wisdom of one great man, they were finally persuaded to live peacefully together. This Confederacy still exists as the Six Nations. And the story of the Iroquois Confederacy is the story of Diganawida a very wise and good man. It was he who thought out this plan of peace. He was also a brave man because it took courage to make his plan work. This then is our story, Diganawida and the Iroquois Confederacy. have come, Atataro, to ask you to keep your Onondagas away from the hunting grounds of the Cayugas. You waste your time. Atataro takes what he wants. But the hunting grounds belong to us. You yourself signed the treaty. I chose to break it. The Cayugas are peace-loving people. But we shall stand for no one interfering with our rights. The Cayugas are weaklings. You have no rights. You drive us to war, Atotaro. Then there shall be war. And war flamed in central New York, and the Iroquois were split apart again through the evil of Atotaro, one of the chiefs of the Onondagas who lived where Syracuse now stands. Meanwhile, a strange scene was being enacted on the northern shores of Lake Ontario. Deganawida, a young Huron, was preparing to leave his people, his canoe poised in the clear blue waters. He was alone but for his grandmother, and as the waves lapped softly on the shore, the aged woman was heavy in heart. I'm saddened to see you go, my grandson. My grief will know no end. My mission is clear, Grandmother. I am needed by those who know of nothing but quarrels and strife and war. But you are a young man. Surely the chiefs are wise, or they would not be leaders of their people. What can you hope to do among them? I am sick in spirit and sick in soul. If someone could talk to those who would always wage war, if they could be shown that peace will gain more than any war, that at least we would live in the kind of world the great creator intended. I beg you to return to your people. There is no turning back. And will you return? I shall not come again this way. Then you will send word. No. In time, go to the hilltop yonder where stands a single tree. Cut at the tree with your hatchet. If blood flows from the wound, you will know that I have perished and my worth has failed. And if no blood flows? Then all is well. And my mission is successful. And Deganawida pointed his canoe toward the sunrise and eventually came to the shore of the land of the Oneidas. And then he traveled across the country, preaching his word of peace to tribes wherever he found them. And although some doubted his ability to carry through his plan, nearly all spoke well of it. And soon word of Deganawida's mission began to spread through the land of the Iroquois. Deganawida next headed for the land of the Mohawks. Having paddled down the Mohawk River in his canoe, 
Deganawida arrived at the lower falls of the river at what is now Cohoes, New York. And there, weary from his long journey, he made his camp, and with the coming of the evening star, sat beneath a tall tree and smoked his pipe. But he was not alone for long. He heard voices and saw the Mohawk warriors gathering at the edge of the clearing, and he arose and he spoke. Come forward. I come to you as a friend. Who are you, and what do you want? I am the Ganawida, and I bring you a message of peace. There is no peace here. You are a Mohican. You seek to do us harm. I swear by the creator of all things, I come in peace. Where are the others? I have come alone. Is it not foolish to travel alone when war drums echo through the valley? That is why I have come, to put an end to war. You, one man, alone? Do you take us for fools? I repeat, where are the others? I pledge my word, I am alone. Then I shall come forward. We have often been betrayed, tricked, and defiled. But yours is not the look of an evil man. Tell me of your peace, for we are sick at heart of bloodshed. As the chief of the Mohawks, I shall listen. And Daganawida told of his plan for peace, of the longhouse and representation by all clans and all tribes in the one great council. And when he had finished, the chief spoke to his people. The words of this man are good. But are they true? Let him give us a sign. Let him climb to the top of this tall tree by the falls, and we shall cut it down over the cliff. If he lives to see sunrise, we shall accept his message. Very well. Will you accept, Aganawida? I shall climb the tree to the highest branch. Now. And as the great tree plummeted to the water, the Ganawida disappeared below the surface, and the chief told his people to leave and return at sunrise. And soon there was quiet in the village. The fires died and the ashes grew cold, and the soft veil of night hushed the forest as the Mohawks, one by one, dropped off to sleep. They wondered what strange events the morning I heard them say they would be here at sunrise. Where? There. There, in the forest. They come. The sight of you warms our hearts, Nuganawida. It is good. Yesterday I had great doubt. Now I doubt no longer. For you have survived a terrible experience. Your words must be true. Nuganawida, there is another who preaches peace, Hiawatha of the Onondagas. He has left his tribe because of his differences with their evil chief, Atataro. Good. Let me go to him. Men of goodwill must work together. And they met, and the Gonawida spoke. I am the Gonawida. Ganawida, are you he who goes through the land speaking words of peace? I am he. And you? I am Hiawatha. For many years I have been sad about the strife and evil among our people. Then I heard of Daganawida who pleads the cause of peace. If you think me worthy of your thoughts, Daganawida, teach them to me that I may help you. Each man who has goodwill in his heart is worthy, Hiawatha. Each man who brings his pipe of peace may smoke it with me. There are many men of goodwill. How shall they know one another? We shall have one longhouse in which the great chiefs of each nation shall live as children of one family. As in one family, the troubles of one child are the concern of all. So shall these chiefs decide for the good of all. 
and all will abide by the law. And shall each nation choose the men to represent them in the longhouse? They shall. How shall this be done? Each clan or family shall choose among itself the chiefs who shall speak for their clan in the tribal council. There the same law shall prevail. The clan chiefs meeting together shall decide for the tribe. And then the men of the tribal council shall choose men to represent their tribe at the meetings of their nation. It shall be so. And the nation shall elect the great chiefs who shall meet together in the long house of peace. It is good to go. Let us go forth and tell these things to the people. What shall I do? You have a silver tongue, Hiawatha. You shall speak for me. I am grateful to Ganawida. I go toward the sunrise. The rise of another moon will find me in the land of the Mohawks. Then, accompanied by chiefs of the Mohawk nation, the Ganawida and Hiawatha persuaded the Oneidas and the Cayugas to accept the great peace. And so, now with three nations at their back, the Ganawida and Hiawatha returned to the Onondagas and were able to convince their chiefs, all but Atatero, that it would be well to join. And then they carried their peace message to Canandaigua Lake, where they persuaded the two branches of the people of the Great Hill, the Senecas, warlike and independent though they were, to settle difference and enter the longhouse. Then Deganawida and Hiawatha set out to meet Atatero because they felt that without him their plan would fail. Crossing Onondaga Lake after fighting a fearful storm, they beached their canoe at what is now known as Hiawatha Point and then climbed the bank and stood before the wizard and Hiawatha spoke. Behold, we too are come. I sent word that you should stay away. We shall not stay away so long as you refuse to accept our plan of peace. These are the words of the great law. On these words we shall build the house of peace. The long house with five fires that is yet one household. These are the words of righteousness and health and power. What is this foolishness about houses and righteousness and health? The Ganawida, tell me. The words are the building material of the new peace. There shall be righteousness when men desire justice, health when men obey reason, power when men accept the great law. These things shall be given from the longhouse, where five nations shall live in quiet as one family. At this very place, Adotaro, where the chiefs of the five nations will assemble, I shall plant the great tree of peace, and its roots shall extend to the far places of the earth so that all mankind may have the shelter of the great law. But what is that to me? I am a great chief, a wizard. I need no shelter. You yourself shall tend the council fire of the five nations, the fire that never dies. And the smoke of that fire shall reach the sky and be seen by all men. I shall tend it. Who shall bring this about? You, if you wish it. You shall be a chief of the five nations. Of course. I desire this thing, but what trickery makes you offer this to me? Why do you not be the chief? To me, peace is the most important. If you will enter the long house of peace with your Onondagas, you will sit as one of the great chiefs of a nation, a nation which is greater than a small chief of a great tribe. There is no power to bring this to pass. It is not yet. <laughs> At that, Hiawatha and Deganawida returned as they had come across the lake to where the chiefs were waiting for them on the far shore. Make haste, said Deganawida. This is the time. They all put their canoes into the lake and paddled across. As they neared the middle, they heard the voice of Atatara rush out to meet them, crying, It is not yet. The wind lifted the waves against the canoes. But they put their strength into their paddles, and before the voice had died away, they stood before Atatero. And Deganawida spoke. Behold, here is power. These are five nations. Their strength together is greater than yours. But your voice shall be one voice when you speak in council, and all men shall hear you. This shall be your strength in the future the will of a united people. The work is finished. 
you shall henceforth preside over the council. And you shall strive in all ways to make reason and the peaceful mind prevail. Your voice shall be the voice of the great law. All men shall hear you and find peace. Now, some 500 years later, the Iroquois Confederacy still stands. And if you look at the laws and constitution of New York State, you'll see how closely our government today follows the plan the Indians began so long ago. You've been listening to the story of the Iroquois Confederacy. This program was presented by the Junior Leagues of New York State in cooperation with the State Department of Education and was produced in the studios of WPTR Albany, New York.